I first paddled on the Allagash 26 years ago, and I've been coming on it almost every year. Well, I think the Allagash is a really special river because of the history from the Native American people in Maine, the logging history, the state of Maine, having it be the Allagash Wilderness Waterway. Our business is called Mahusik Guide Service. We have done many trips on the Allagash because it has, it's a beautiful river, but it also has quite a reputation. People have heard about it, and so people want to do that trip. The reason I wanted to take a trip on the Allagash was uh, I'd never done it before. I've long wanted to do it. Um, I worked as a ranger at Baxter Park and am familiar with this area somewhat, but I had never gotten up on the river. Um, I like the wilderness aspect of it, being out in the woods and out in the bush, being able to feel um, independent and self-reliant kind of out there. And I was looking for ways to grow in strength and ways to find time for reflection and writing. The high points of this trip have really just been the pristine beauty that's surrounding us every day, all day long. Um, everything from seeing the fog rise off the river in the morning to watching the sun set and seeing a bald eagle fly across the river and the cedar waxwing birds. The moose sightings were amazing. Two sightings of a mother moose with young was great. You know, as, as a wildlife biologist, I just like seeing wildlife in, in their native environment. Moose in particular seemed unafraid of us. They just looked up when we paddled by and, and slowly moseyed off. So that sort of surprised me. Just seeing the bald eagles and the great blue herons and, and the mergansers doing what they do in the natural world. And the Allagash Falls is, is just a beautiful falls that you get to enjoy. And there's no roads to it, so it makes it more special to me. The thundering waters of the Allagash Falls drop, I think, about 40 feet, yet we were able to swim in the quiet waters below the falls, and the beach was a good place for lunch and a nap. The biggest challenge is definitely we have been learning to read the river. What's interesting is the river, you know, there's parts of it that are very shallow, and then it's also very deep, and so it's not the same anywhere along the river. It changes a lot, and so you sometimes can sort of get lulled into just being on the river and then all of a sudden you realize you need to take your attention and pay attention to what you're doing um, because you don't want to hit any of those rocks. And I like the challenge of there's a little bit of rapids and rips along the way for um, you have to really be on your toes you know watching which way to go and we use uh, when I paddle I'm usually I'm always actually in a wood canvas canoe so you have to really, you know, do a lot of polling and make sure you don't hit any rocks. And I like that challenge on the Allagash that some rivers don't have. It's just flat paddling. It's much more pleasant to be out here when it's sunny and warm because you can go for a swim. And I think that's one of the fun things I liked to do is make sure you get in the water, not always being on top of it, but to get in the water and feel that current. And then you really realize how strong the current is in a few places. It's a very different feel in the canoe. You know you're going downstream, but when you get out of the water and try to walk against it, you realize, wow, there is a lot of power in this water here. Yeah, we take all kinds of people on our canoe trips, even on the Allagash, and beginners, people that have had some experience, and we go over instructions so they learn. Learning by experience, you can't beat it. You can hear the words and then putting it together and to do it when you need to do it. That's really cool. Um, some people want to learn how to pole, which is a really neat thing to do, and it's kind of not a lot of people do it anymore so it's a really fun way to travel down the river or up the river um, but in shallow water you can really maneuver your canoe and put it right where you want it so you're not hitting rocks and um, it's just a, a great thing to expose people to and, and teach them. Pulling is a skill that is largely lost. Most people don't have the opportunity to learn it and don't know how to do it. But because of the low water, we needed to be able to do it 
and so we practiced poling below the remains of Long Lake Dam. We had to portage around the dam, and there was a slackwater place below the dam, and then some rips after that that were ideal for learning, and we took the opportunity to pick up a skill, just a rudimentary skill on my part, but a skill that is nearly lost. Well, the food's fabulous. I mean, the food has to make the trip. I was so, so impressed by how Polly and Jason and Grant and Sandy cooked breakfast and dinner over a wood fire. And these included giant blueberry pancakes and bacon and eggs and sausage and cereals, all for breakfast, to making desserts like the biscuits for strawberry shortcake at dinner and the hot coffee and tea and cocoa um, that helped warm us up on the chilly mornings and evenings. And I was impressed, too, by how everyone in the group also pitched in to help prepare these meals. I never get tired of being on the river. You know, like some rivers you might do one or two times and then be, okay, I've done that. I want to go somewhere else, but the river's always changing depending on the water level, depending on the weather, the group. You know, I've been bringing people here for many years, and I just like having, sharing the experience with them. You can do on a little boat built for two. Can you can do? I'll be your captain and your crew. Nothing. 